Uh, today we're going to be going over 2D hollowing, 3D hollowing, blockers, drains, and suction cups, with a little bit of time spent on how to support the internal structure of your model after you've hollowed it. Alright, let's begin. First we're going to talk about 2D hollowing. 2D hollowing is what you get with the free version of Lychee. It's not the best, but it's better than nothing. So to access that, select your models under the prepare uh, tab, click on hollow, and then hollowing 2D, and click on on. This will turn on 2D hollowing on your objects. This isn't a true hollowing like the 3D hollowing you get with the paid feature, meaning if I export these as .stls, this structure will not be hollowed like this. This is only for the, uh, when it's slicing the image, for it to, uh, this black basically won't print and the white will. The first setting here is thickness. This is the wall thickness. So obviously the more I drag it up, the thicker the wall is, the thinner the thinner. I like keeping it at 1.8. And the next thing is dimming. This is an interesting setting where it'll actually uh, change how much uh, light, UV light is exposed to the, the in internal pillars it creates here. I don't necessarily sure why you'd want to use this. Uh, it's just going to make them a softer cure and I want them to do their job as pillars. So I'm going to just turn it off. Uh, the next thing is the density of the pillars. If you go something like this, uh, you'll actually create a bunch of resin traps that will cause your model to possibly explode, crack, and have a bunch of uncured resin in it. So we really want to make sure this density is down to a point where we're only creating these little uh, cylinders and not actually uh, where these cylinders don't actually collide with each other so much that you end up with a bunch of resin traps. For that one probably about 15, 10%, somewhere around there is about where you want. Uh, and of course how thick those are gonna be. Um, I probably like to keep them about 1.5, which is the same size as I use for my interior pillars. Uh, the type is just lattice or double lattice. It's just gonna change the uh, actual uh, pattern in which these come up. It's hard to see in this one. Uh, if I could export this as a 3D model, uh, you could see it better, but I just like to stick with regular lattice if I'm doing 2D hollowing. And that's pretty much it for 2D hollowing. Uh, all the other features that are beneficial for Lychee are found under 3D hollowing, so let's cover that now. One of the advantages of 3D hollowing uh, over 2D hollowing is I get to pick the thickness for each of the models. Since this one's more of a base, I like to do it at a thickness of 2.0 and a quality of 2.0. Since this is not a base, I like to do it at a thickness of 1.8 and a quality of 2.0. What the quality is, is it changes how much uh, geometry I have on the interior of the model. The higher the quality, the more geometry, the less, the less. So we'll redo this at 2.0, click up, or 1.0 and update to show you. Now these uh, are much larger. If I do it at 4.0 and click OK again, it's both gonna take longer to do the hollowing if I export this as, as an STL, it will also be a much larger model. And um, therefore taking up more space. And it's just, I don't know, the advantages you get out of it, to me, don't don't really pay for the extra costs. So 2.0 is kind of where I've found that sweet spot of cost versus uh, benefit. So now that these are both hollowed, Let's recalculate my resin. Before it was just over $8, now it's $2.72. So we're gonna end up saving quite a bit of money just by hollowing these parts out. That's true with the 2D hollowing, but with 2D you can't do, uh, you can't change between the wall thickness of your different objects and you can't do a an estimate to see how much you're making. The other part of 2D hollowing is, as you've seen, you can't actually see the interior structure of your model, which is important for the next step which is um, suction cups. This is also a Leachy Pro feature. So you select the models and then you click on search selected under suction cup detector. This is gonna show me um, in a very cool uh, UI what how big my suction cups are. They're so massive on this particular model, these, these just won't print. It will rip the model off the supports, rip the raft off the build plate or rip the model in half. Uh, it can even damage your motor as you try to pull up on this massive suction cup. So to get rid of that, we need holes. On the bottom of an object, I like the, the holes to be quite large. It helps both with allowing resin and air to flow in to remove the suction cup. It also helps get UV light inside of the model to cure the interior, which helps with uh, you know your models not exploding. 
you definitely need to make sure you cure and clean the inside of your model if you hollow it. So now let's do another suction cup detector that I've added a few drain holes on the bottom. And as we can see, they're much, much smaller. Uh, we've got some on top. So now the ones on top, you get rid of the same way. Uh, we're going to put some holes there, but these holes are multi-purpose. They also add as drain holes. So as this model is printing, the resin can kind of fall out uh, back into the vat, not get trapped inside the model. So I like them to be on the top of the part if I can. Both, and then at the bottom as well for the suction cup. This one will get rid of the suction cup. This one will allow for some resin to drain out back into the vat during printing. We've got a few very small suction cups here for the feet. We'll get rid of them as well. Which is some really, really small ones. And one right here. This one's red. Uh, it's because it's going through this, going through the model here so I can move it around until we know we're, we're going inside of the model, just like that. But we can see this one right here is a little bit larger. This is all suction cup. That's a little deeper. I will want to actually deal with this one. What I can do with this is just sneak a small drain hole into some of the geometry here. And either you won't even notice it once the print's all together, or if you do notice it, you can easily fill this in with just some resin or some putty or anything of your choosing. All right, let's do another search for the suction cups. And they should mostly all be gone. A couple I missed here. Um, I won't go through that in this video, but you just pretty much repeat that process and eventually you'll get it to where you only have these little tiny small suction cups you don't really care about. But what if you have a suction cup, uh, let's say like this one right here, this small one, and I don't really want to put, um, I could put a drain hole right here. But let's say I don't really want to. Um, this is a good example of maybe you've got a, an ankle or a foot that's really small and putting a drain hole in it is just not the appropriate way to handle it, but there's still a suction cup you want to get rid of. Or it's like an ankle, so it's it's hollowed a little bit, but it's weak and you would prefer it to be solid uh, to add a little more strength to it. That's where we get into blockers. So with the blocker, what I can do is actually add in a uh, an area, and this area is a cube, where there will be no, uh, no hollowing will take place. So I can actually go in here and build up this resin. We'll hit update. Where in this area, the, uh, the hollowing, it's not, I'm not adding resin to the model. I'm just removing where it can hollow. It blocks hollowing. So now I have this little shelf right here. So if I do another search of the suction cup, that suction cup is gone because now it's just a little extra resin that's being built up because it's preventing the hollowing. Very useful for lots of models with small details where you still want to hollow it, but you don't want to have issues. Um, and then another, I can put another one right here to kind of get rid of that, or I'll just build up this resin, make it flat. But that's how you use blockers. So now let's go over how to support uh, the interior structure of your model now that you've hollowed it. What I like to do on this one is click on supports, click on island, and then click on search selected. This is going to show both the islands on the exterior of the model and the interior. Uh, for this purpose, we only care about the model, the islands on the interior of the model. Now that the island search is done, we can see it showed us all the islands on the bottom of the model, but I want to see the islands on the top. So I'll go over to the layer selector and click on bottom so it now says up. Now what I can do is see the structure from the inside of the model going down. And all these little red dots here are the islands I need to support, especially on the keys, as if I don't get any support on these, these keys won't print at all, they'll just be flat. And whatever's supposed to insert in here, like the head for the neck and all these parts just simply won't fit. So these are the ones we really care about. I use a setting here I call an interior pillar, which is set to 1.5 tip diameter, 1.5 diameter. And this is just so that this never breaks off as I want it to be uh, here permanently. Uh, what I don't want to have happen is a bunch of supports slowly break off over time where and get stuck inside the model where I now have a pretty good rattle and I don't want a baby's rattle. I want, uh, I want a base. So I'll just go through here and make sure that uh, 
focusing mostly on these keys and then focusing on some of these um, larger details that I don't want to print flat. It'd do the same thing a key will do, which is print flat right here. Um, kind of destroying some of the details of this model. I want to give them all the opportunity in the world to be as successful as they can so we can assemble this model properly. Same thing here on this neck. We want to make sure it's got plenty of support. And then probably some on these shoulders. Yeah, look right there, little island. And I like to think um, these shoulders get kind of flat, like a nice flat roof, and I don't want them to kind of cave in or be weird shaped. So I want them a little more of something to build on top of. So I think where it might be an issue is kind of right here where it gets flat, but that's too late. So I prefer to put it a little further down where it has the rest of it has something else to, to pull against on the FEP. All right, and just to recap, we've gone over 2D hollowing, 3D hollowing, blockers, drains, suction cups, and interior pillars. Hopefully with this knowledge, you can start doing your own hollowing, save some money, increase the success rate of your prints by reducing the cross-section. And thanks for watching, and have a good day.